Welcome to this week's On the Road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting May 28th. This week's episode comes from my hotel on the sunny Portugal coast, where I'm attending a partner conference for WatchGuard. Uh, because of events I'm attending, I'm going to try to make this episode as quick as possible. This week I'll cover four security stories, saving the major one for last. So let's start with Apple releasing the iOS security guide. Over the week, Apple did release a security guide for iOS users, people that use iPhones, iPads, or, or iPod touches. This guide tells you about some of the basic security features that are built into iOS devices and how their App Store marketplace is more secure than many other marketplaces. If you're an iOS user, you should scan over this document. It's kind of interesting to see Apple release this kind of document. They tend to let their users uh, think that Mac products or Apple products are invulnerable to security issues. So to see them proactively uh, releasing a security guide is a positive step for Apple. Another story comes in the form of a Cisco iOS patch, or more specifically, a Cisco iOS XR patch. This patch fixes a denial of service vulnerability in some very specific Cisco iOS devices. These are usually their really large devices like the Cisco 9000 series aggregation routers or some of their carrier grade equipment. So this is an important patch to uh, big companies that use very, very large Cisco gear or maybe ISPs and telecommunications companies. Uh, but normal small to medium businesses who have Cisco devices, Cisco routers probably are not affected by this patch. Uh, nonetheless, if you are a Cisco iOS XR user, you should check out uh, this uh, advisory that has a patch for this denial of service issue. Another interesting story comes in the form of more confirmation on the source of Stuxnet. In a few episodes past, I talked about an article from ISS Source uh, that confirmed that the United States government and Israel were responsible for creating the Stuxnet uh, worm or cyber threat that went after uh, nuclear facilities in Iran. Well, this week, various sources like MSNBC and the New York Times released very, very detailed uh, articles talking about and confirming that the Obama administration and even the, the Bush administration before them had started a project called Olympic Games specifically to launch cyber attacks against uh, uh, other nation states like Iran. So this is just further proof that it does seem like Stuxnet and other attacks like Stuxnet are nation state sponsored and that our governments are actually participating in, in cyber espionage and various cyber attacks. So I'll finish this week with what's by far the most uh, important security story of the week and the one that grabbed the most headlines by far. Earlier this week, Kaspersky announced the discovery of something called the Flame Worm or the Flame Backdoor Toolkit. Uh, this was a worm that they discovered in partnership with other analysts that was infecting primarily Middle Eastern organizations, mostly Iranian organizations. And it seemed to be a new instance of an advanced persistent threat, very similar to Stuxnet and Dooku type malware. Uh, according to Kaspersky, this is one of the largest and most complex malware samples they've ever looked at. Uh, so far, no one really knows how the malware is originally infecting its victims, but Kaspersky is learning a bit about how the malware works. Essentially, the malware is used to steal information from the victims. So it can do things like packet sniff on your network, record screenshots. It can even record audio from the mic of the device it's on. Uh, furthermore, it seems to scan Bluetooth wireless connections looking for Bluetooth devices. So it really seems like an information stealing or an espionage class worm. Uh, when it gathers this information, it also connects to a, a command and control channel using SSL encryption to feed this information back to the attacker. Now, it's going to take Kaspersky and other antivirus researchers quite a long time to fully understand this worm. Uh, one of its aspects is it's 20 megabytes in size if you get its full, full uh, 20 mod so it is a very, very large worm with a lot to analyze. But it seems clear that all the experts believe this is some sort of nation state sponsored attack that really is targeting Middle Eastern facilities right now. 
So what should you do about this worm? If you've read the news this week, it seems like everyone's talking about the flame worm. Well, the good news is this worm should not affect normal organizations at all, mostly organizations that are outside the Middle East. It seems to be heavily targeting the Middle East. Furthermore, now that AV companies have discovered the worm, there are signatures for it. For instance, at WatchGuard, with our XTM and XCS uh, products, we partner with AV vendors like Kaspersky, who discovered this worm, and AVG. And both these uh, vendors have definitions and signatures that can detect all known variants of flame today. Uh, that said, according to Kaspersky's research, this worm seems to have been around for quite a while in these organizations. It seems to have been made in 2010. Uh, so you, there definitely weren't signatures for it back then. Uh, nonetheless, if you're a normal IT person, you're not in the Middle East, uh, the flame worm is just something interesting to read about. It is interesting to learn about these new advanced persistent threats, some of the different techniques they're using, and also the fact that nation states are taking part in this type of cyber espionage. But from a purely practical standpoint, I wouldn't expect the flame worm to infect most customers out there. So that's it for this week's On the Road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review. I hope it was useful. As usual, you can find me in all the regular places. You can follow our blog at WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com or you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Thanks for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.